Okay, so the first step is to dissolve 50 grams of lead to acetate in 200 mils of water and 5 mils of glacial acetic acid. So I'm just going to combine that all in here. I'm about to say, really? Really? Is this what we're doing here? Let me tell you what we're doing. You are going to stop being a goddamn pain in the ass. That's what you're going to do. There we go. Five mils. Alright, stupid bulb. Okie doke. Turn on the heat, and we are going to let this stir until everything dissolves. Then we have to cool it down to between 40 and 50 degrees C. Oh, okay. Well, it looks like it's all going to dissolve pretty readily. Alrighty then. Cool. Alright, we're still going to let it heat up and I will come back when um, everything has dissolved and it's at the correct temperature. Okay, so the solution is at about the right temperature. It's just under 50 degrees C. What I'm going to do now is I am going to add some coils of magnesium ribbon. We need to use three and a half grams of this stuff. And we are going to add it in here in order to create lead sponge. Um, the lead sponge has to be freshly prepared. You can't use powdered lead and um, and it has to be done without stirring. Now I want to kind of break this up a little bit so it isn't overlapping with itself as much as possible. We're going to have to use a glass stirring rod to hold this underneath the solution and we do need to be careful about the temperature and maintain it um, between 40 and 50 degrees C. Now, the textbook says to do this until all of the bubbling stops and there's no more gas evolved, which will take about 30 minutes, according to them. You still focused, you piece of shit. So, there we go. Nice, we're getting red sponge everywhere. Oh, for God's sake. Okay, we'll deal with it. Well, the textbook said to do this would take about half an hour, but it's been about an hour now, I guess, and it's still bubbling and giving off gas. It is very hard. I mean, the textbook was very clear that you didn't want to compactify it. I had no idea it would turn into a big solid lump like this. I figured you'd still be able to separate out the pieces that were used to make it, but apparently not. Um, I don't want to fool with it too much. But anyway, I'm going to wait for it to quit producing gas, which I have no idea how long that'll take, but whenever it does, I will come back. Okay, everybody, a half an hour my ass. It took a lot longer than that. It took a couple of hours, um, a little over two hours probably, for it to stop bubbling. And it has only mostly stopped bubbling. There is a little bit of bubbling still going on in there, but it is what it is. Um, I'm going to try to carefully decant this off here. We need to rinse this several times with warm water is not a problem. And it says not to disturb this too much, so see, you guys can see everything right, yeah. Now you like my new stone slab here? It's pretty convenient, my roommate got that the other day. And yeah, the textbook was very particular about not compacting the lead sponge, so we want to be gentle with it. You can smell the acetate. Right, 
Fragile focus, you piece of shit. said to do this several times, so I don't know what several is. Four or five times, I guess. That's probably good. There's our lead sponge. Alright, so for the next step, we are going to take this here solution of 1 or 10 grams of barium nitrate and 100 mils of water. We're going to pour that over this here lead sponge. Whee! Guess we'll give it a few tiny little rinse here. And. Okay, now we have to boil it for one and a half to two hours. Um, the lead will convert into lead monoxide. Um, it looked like, I don't know, there's a typo in the book. Um, if, the, if you look at the, the chemical equations for this reaction, it shows that you get lead monoxide, but then if you read the instructions, it says that you get lead one oxide. I suspect the lead one oxide is a typo. I suspect you get lead monoxide. So lead two oxide. So anyway, so it said to cover it up with a watch glass just like this and let it boil for an hour and a half to two hours. So I am going to let it do just that. I'll probably wrap it in foil just to keep the heat in. And, huh. Something's kind of happening. Cool. Well, whenever there's a change and there's something worth seeing, I will come back and we'll take a look at it. Okay, everybody. It is the next day because boiling this took a little longer. I ended up, um, I just don't think the temperature was high enough at first. Um, so I let it boil for a while longer, a couple hours actually at a higher temp. And this is the result. Um, you can see that not all of the lead quite reacted, but a lot of it did. Ugh. I don't know, man. We may end up with a crappy yield here. I'm not sure. But we are going to soldier on. Um, yeah, there's only a little bit of lead left. I know it's very hard to actually show you guys, but take my word for it. That little band right there is... Well, no, no, it's all along the edge here. It's like a powder. But there's very little on the bottom of the beaker. Well, anyway, what we're, the next step is to filter this off, so that's what we're going to do. So, got lead monoxide on everything. All right. And I've got a cotton plug in there and two coffee filters, so... That yeah, seems to be doing a real good job with it. Awesome. All right. And that is what we have left over. Kind of sucks, actually, because it looks like it's still contaminated with some lead. Well, I can recycle it. I'll come up with something to do with it. But I'm going to rinse it with a little bit of water, pour that in here, and once it is completely filtered, I will come back and we will do our next step. Okay, so the next step that we have to do is to reheat the filtrate and bubble carbon dioxide gas through it. Um, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone, especially since I'm out of sodium carbonate at the moment. Um, I am going to use copper carbonate instead, and then I can make up some copper chloride. Um, specifically some copper 1 chloride, which I don't have in my inventory. I don't have any monovalent copper compounds, and this is an oversight that I should fix. So, I am going to do that here. Um, 
my inspiration came from VBiz, who did a video on copper 1 chloride the other day. After looking it up, I found that it's actually pretty useful. So, anywho, I'm going to go ahead and get the gas generator started and bubble CO2 through the solution. That will drop out any excess um, lead or barium as the carbonates. We will, I'll filter that off and I'll come back when I'm ready for that step. There's the precipitate after bubbling CO2 through it. I'm wondering how effective my reaction actually was, because that's a lot of precipitate. But whatever, we will keep going through the motions. Um, now we need to filter this and then evaporate it over the boiling water bath, and it should produce a yellow syrupy liquid. So I guess we'll do that now. So I have filtered off all of the lead and barium carbonate precipitate. Again, there was a fair bit of it, but I mean, this may be normal for all I know. Um, I mean, the fact that we ended up with so much lead monoxide tells me that the reaction probably did work. So, again, I'm just going to proceed as if this is normal, because for all I know, it is. So, um, Anyway, that's just rinse water dripping out of there. That's not the actual solution. So what I'm going to do now is the instructions say to evaporate this down till about 40 mils and then to put it in like an evaporating dish over a boiling water bath and evaporate that down the rest of the way. So I'll put a stir bar in here, um, one of the ones that became deactivated from me thinking I could clean them up by using them as boiling stones when I made nitric acid. Yeah, don't do that. If you use cheap stir bars, it will ruin them. They do still make good boiling bars, I guess. Um, so, you know, and they're very, still very inert, so they still work for that. So anyway, I kept them around. Um, but yeah, just FYI, make sure you don't do that. So anyway, put this over here, get a boiling bar, I guess, for it. And um, I'll come back when this is, the volume has decreased and I put it into the um, evaporating dish, I guess. We'll check in then. Okay, I actually had to heat it a little bit more to get it to completely solidify on cooling. So here is the 25 mils of acetone, and I'm sorry that the sun is probably washing a lot of this out. Okay, oh very nice. I was wondering about that suction filtration. I'm like, is the author fucking high? And if so, can I have some? Because that's really going to suction filter. But, apparently, it turns into nice chunks. It's always nice when you get chunky product. Well, nice when you are expecting or hoping for chunky product, that is. It isn't always nice. Okay, suction filter. Uh, no, pass. I'm just going to pipette that out of there. I'm lazy, so lazy I'm going to make more work for myself. Stop! off. Frodo? Frodo! You go up there, dog, and you're gonna wish you hadn't. Better not. That's what I thought, shithead. Oh, well, maybe filtering it really is, well, shit. I filter it when we can decant it. Guys! Sorry for the dogs, y'all. I don't know what they're going nuts about. Okay, so, man, the fucking sun is just ridiculous here. So, there you go. You can see it. It's kind of a very pale yellow solid. Now we have to reflux this in ethanol for half an hour. Um, has to be 120 mils of 95% ethanol and 30 mils of water. Um, so I am going to get that ready. I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap to make sure not too much of the acetone evaporates, and I'll come back when it's ready for reflux. All right, everyone. So there is the um, solid residue, and the textbook says to digest it 
in this um, mixture of ethanol and water for half an hour at reflux. So, I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and use the Vigru column because it's like 400 millimeters long and that should be more than enough to contain refluxing ethanol. And um, that way I don't have to screw with setting up the actual condenser. And um, yeah, I will come back um, when this is done. Okay, so this stuff has been refluxing for a little more than half an hour. I gave it some extra time. Um, there's still a good bit of yellow residue at the bottom, which is a little discouraging, but whatever. We'll try filtering this and we'll see what we get. Okay. Working on this fucker for two goddamn days now. Okay. Come on over here. Focus, you piece of shit. Come on. Okay, this is really goddamn hot. Like really hot. Extraordinarily hot, in fact. Scalding. <laughs> And as usual, it's just a cotton plug. Or is it a cotton plug? No, I think this is just coffee filter system. I, I didn't want it to take a long time to filter. That's right, that's what it is. I didn't want it cooling off very much, and I don't have a jacketed filter that I can keep nice and hot. So, oh well, we'll just have to accept the lower yield. I don't know if you can see that or not. It does have a slightly yellowish tinge to it, so maybe that's a good sign. I hope. There isn't as much residue as I thought there would be in here. It's not terrible. So, I mean, hell, it, for all I can tell people, it looks like this is work, but... Knock on wood, man. Don't want to jinx it. We'll see what we get when this evaporates down. I will come back when there is something to report. All right, everybody. Well, this is it. I mean, it is very contaminated, but with something. At least I think it is. Um, I mean, everything in the textbook said that, you know, things were yellowish. I, but I thought that that was supposed to go away once we refluxed it in the ethanol and the water. I don't know. But, I mean, I think we can feel reasonably confident that this is our product, even if it is clearly contaminated with something. Um, I am open to suggestions as for ways to test it. Um, I've been looking in some of the textbooks that I've got, and I've come across a few things. I'm going to try it, but I'm going to let this um, dry out in the desiccator first. So, now that I have a little community thingy, I guess my channel finally got big enough to where I, I, YouTube decided I was worthy to be able to post pictures for you guys. Isn't that nice? Um, so, now, you know, I mean, I, I can already do that in the comment section on BitChute, even if they are being draconian about their fucking comment section. So, anyway. Um, so, I will keep you guys updated on how this goes, but like I said, this is getting long, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down subscribe comment share the video let me know what your your thoughts are people I, I'd love to know what y'all have to say about this um, so yeah yeah until the next one you guys I will see you later not the, the best work I've ever done but I guess it's okay